Hello everyone. Um, good to have you guys on on today's uh, broadcast, today's live broadcast. I'm coming to you from Toronto, Canada. Today is um today's topic is a very very interesting one. So a man walks into a plane and he walks to a seat in the plane and he sits at the window seat of that particular aisle. I assume that you don't know all the intricacies, assuming that you do not know all the facts surrounding this theory. You're just going to base what you're saying on what I am telling you. So just assume that. But this guy goes to sit by the window side. Maybe he's tired. Maybe because of his age, he couldn't read what is um, written on the aisle. Sometimes I even get confused when I, I, I get to my seat number in the plane. You know, I don't know which one is the window because for some planes, the way they put the graphics is very confusing. So let's assume that this guy, out of his old age, out of fatigue, out of whatever, does not realize that he is not sitting on his seat. So he sits by the window side. Let us even assume that he likes to sit by the window. He didn't get a window seat, but he just goes ahead and he sits by the window because that is his favorite seat. Some minutes later, a young man walks up to this man who is elderly. He's actually 80 years old. Okay. This young man in his 30s, let's assume, walks up to this man and says, Excuse me, sir, you're sitting on my seat. And um, whether he shouted it, whether he said it nicely, whether he was smiling, whether he was frowning, but he just says, sir, you're sitting on my seat. Shows him his ticket. I don't know, for some reason, this elderly man did not get up. Another passenger comes and begs this young man to allow the man to sit there because you can see he's an elderly man. He's 80 years. He insists, no, I need to sit there because it's my seat. I paid for it or whatever, but it is his seat because it's on his, it's on his ticket. They go and bring in the flight attendant and the flight attendant tries to talk this young man into allowing this elderly man to sit in the seat and this young man refuses and insists that he has to sit by the window side and so eventually this elderly man gets up from the seat that he's been sitting all this while belonging to this young man gets up and moves to his own rightful seat beside this young man on the aisle of the plane and this young man occupies his seat well i wish this was a fictitious story i wish this was a was a script for a movie but it actually happened i wish this happened somewhere else you know we'll say oh you know what if this was nigeria but guess what it happened in nigeria i wish it happened to somebody that like a nobody just a story you know, mr john mr james mr whoever nobody happened to someone who is well known someone who is a professor someone who is internationally acclaimed someone who is a fighter of indiscipline someone who is a no-nonsense person someone who is a literary giant someone who is a nobel prize winner 
someone who is a radical activist. It happened to a former chief of the Road Safety Corporation in Nigeria. It happened to our dear own Professor Wole Shoinka. And since this happened, the internet has gone on fire. It's gone ablaze all over Nigeria. A lot of people are fighting each other. Friends are having their friendship scattered because of this incident. Husbands and wives are not talking to each other. Children and their parents are fighting because of this. Tribes are at war on the internet because of this same thing. Why? One of my sisters, Sefia Ako, said on her Facebook page that it's amazing how a lot of things are going on in Nigeria. There's killings, there's kidnapping, and all we have time to talk about is this thing that happened, the Wole Shoinka issue. My younger brother, Professor Chimwayon, wrote on his page, and he says that Nigerians are convoluted. I hope I don't tie my tongue saying that. That we disrespect elders when we shunt fuel lines. We disrespect elders when we do a lot of things. But we want to descend on this young man for a seeming disrespect for an elder in the plane. Some other people have gone to insult the hell out of everybody else and said that everybody who thinks that a young man has a right to his seat is a fool, is stupid, does not have any brain. Some people say that anybody who thinks that has sawdust in their brain. Me, some people say, Chidi, you're a media person. You you don't need to have an opinion all you have to do is just present the news but me i refuse i have an opinion especially in this matter and what is my opinion my opinion is that it's only it's only in nigeria it's only in nigeria that you will buy your ticket there is the regular part of the plane and there is the business class of the plane when it is 35,000 naira to buy for ticket in the regular side of the plane it's about 50 something thousand to buy ticket sometimes it is 60,000 sometimes because it is highly in demand it's about 70,000 to buy the ticket to the business class. So I buy my ticket. Only in Nigeria, I buy my ticket. When I'm buying the ticket, it's time to choose seats. They tell me that no, the, bus the window seats has been taken. You only have to take the aisle. Or maybe if you want to choose window seat, it is um, 2,000 Naira more. So I pay the extra money and I get the window seats. But not even that. I have a problem. I have a, a dramatic stress syndrome, something like that. And the doctors have already told me that it is important if I'm booking my flight ticket that I book the window side so that to help calm me down, to give me something to occupy my mind so I don't break out into a fit. And so I take out time. I book my flight early to get the window seat. And it's only in Nigeria that somebody who has insulted the hell out of elders, somebody who has stood for the right of citizens, somebody who is a known radical, will come in and against what he preaches, Somebody who has traveled all over in Nigeria. It's only in Nigeria that somebody who has gone to America, someone who has gone to Europe, someone who has gone to Asia, or somebody who has traveled around the whole world will come inside a plane, 
What they will not do anywhere else, they will go and sit on the chair. That is not their seat. Because usually the number to your seat is written on your ticket. It's only in Nigeria that the elder will see number 28, A, meaning aisle, and number 28, W, meaning window. But he'll go, his own is reading 28, A, but he goes to sit in 28, W. And he is cross his legs and reading his newspaper only in Nigeria. And then, right there, right there, you have infringed on somebody's right. Okay, what if the owner of the seat is a 90 year old man? Will he move when the person asks him to move? Oh, now. The condition for assigning seat in the plane. No, no, wait to. Oh. We are not talking. In fact, one of my friends, Dimbo Atia, said, if you go home and you find your father sitting down on your favorite chair, you will ask him to get up for you. Dimbo is a very good friend and is an outspoken person. But let me tell my friend Dimbo that we are talking about my father's house, even if it is my own house. Being in my father's house is a privilege. Being in a commercial flight is my right. We are not talking about Wole Shoenka's plane here. If I get invited by Wole Shoenka inside his plane and I discover that I am sitting in his favorite seat or he comes and I find him in his plane, sitting in the favorite seat. Who am I to tell him to get up? So who am I to tell my father in his house or in my own house to get up? But we are not talking about the same thing here. We are not talking about public transport. We are not talking about a public service plane that the government has provided. Like Canada, where I live, there are public transportation systems like the bus, like the train, where if you go in, there are, and even here, even here, there are standards that are just established by the society and they are supposed to appeal to your sense of reasoning. But they are not conventional. They are like conventions. They are norms that are adopted through the years, but they are not right. And so, back to our story. Shoinka now goes and he sits in this man's seat. And when the man comes back, you will think that immediately the man points out that, excuse me, sir, you're sitting in my own seat. That Shoinka will say, oh, Sorry, I didn't read the thing well. Um, I thought I was actually on the window side. I didn't know they put me on the aisle. Do you mind if I sit here? And if the young man had advanced any excuses, you would expect that Shoinka will save us all this headache that we're having today, talking about the thing that happened. But then why shouldn't we be talking about the thing that happened? I'm actually happy that we're talking about the thing that happened because you cannot control it. When our people say that once the rain has started falling, you'll be a madman to start trying to send it back up into heaven. It has already started falling. So all those of you who think that we are wasting our time talking about this, just hold on one minute. Just hold it right there. We're not wasting our time. What it shows you is that this is the main problem with Nigeria. That is where, if we get it right here, we'll be okay. Let me tell you something. It is this respect problem that is causing the whole problem in Nigeria. The Imam will tell you in the mosque to go and load up yourself with bomb. You will actually go and load up yourself with bomb and explode yourself. Why? Because he's an elder. You don't want to disrespect him. A pastor will tell you to go and bring everything you have 
that that's what God told him. Some pastors who we know they are original 419, you will go and do it because he is your daddy. You don't want to disrespect him. Oh, yes. The same man of God will tell you that the problem you have is your sister and your brother there. They, they did witchcraft for you. You will go and try to kill your brother and your sister. Wives, the native doctor, the elder in the village will tell you something, even though he is lying. And you go and destroy your marriage because somebody is an elder. That is the problem we have in Nigeria. All the, I don't have disrespect for old age in any way. I pray that I live long to see old age in my life. And I was brought up, those of you that know me, my parents have a zero percent tolerance for disrespect. Discipline was something we don't joke about in my family. So I was brought up very well. And I respect my elders. But, listen to me. I will not refuse to question an elder just because he is an elder. No. You need to question. See, my kids here, seven year old and nine year old come and see where these kids are interrogating me oh no they are very very quick they are very very quick to remind me when i step out of line that's one thing i like about the training about the environment they are growing in they politely remind me and oh my god it's embarrassing i just you know pack myself together and get in line quickly because what would I do to them when my kids remind me that I didn't do what I'm supposed to do and I tell them, shut up. Why don't you have respect for your elders? And so people, people who are in authority, the old, wretched, tired, completely brain-dead people who have refused to relinquish the seat of leadership in Nigeria, they tell you whatever they like and we cannot query them because they are elders. Don't you see that the reason why this action that was taken by Wole Shoyinka is raising so much dust is because that is where the problem is in Nigeria. The Nigerian youth does not understand when he needs to stand up for his rights. But let me shock some of you because a lot of you just took the story on the face value. I saw another post that was purportedly put up by the young man, although one of my friends was trying to say that it's not the young man that wrote it. But if it is the young man that wrote it, he said that after he settled in his seat, that Wole, Shule, Wole Shoyinka told him that, you know what, in my days, I would have done the same thing that you did. And that Nigerian youths need to learn to stand up for their rights. That is more like Wole Shoyinka. And for all those of you, I have seen people say that when they go into a bus and they see that an old man is sitting down, they don't tell them to get up. In the bus, they don't write, they don't write seat number now. How much did you pay for the bus? And this man, if it is true, he says he has a PhD also. And he teaches one new kind of uh, uh, engineering. So it's not a riffraff. And I said it before, for him to have paid for business class. He's in it is the airline that I should blame. It's the airline. The airline, I was standing in a coffee shop trying to get my coffee. And the guy walks up and he goes, while I was waiting, he goes and he starts making an order and i walk up to him and i said no there's a line here you're supposed to st stand in line and he says blah 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 he didn't see anybody and you know what when i was talking to him the attendant comes and serves him and i turn to the attendant and i say are you kidding me so actually 
me that is on your side is now the fool and the guy who's uh, breaking the law is the one you are now supporting i said i'm going to write a letter of complaint against this um, branch of this franchise you know what they did they tried to bribe me they let me have my things that i bought for free to compensate me because they knew what could have been the the, the the reaction from the head office they knew what repercussion that would have brought to them that's to show you what uh, uh, people have to go the extent they have to go through to make sure that the customer is taken care of and go back to that picture I posted one on my Facebook page you would see that the person who took the picture was actually staying on the window side of his own aisle because he took a picture across and you could see that the aisle the seat of the the, the aisle seat on his own on, on on his own aisle where he's sitting the seat that's supposed to be on the aisle was empty so he wasn't sitting on the aisle why did he not stand up for uh, 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 Stroinka to come and sit on his window side why didn't the airline ask Shoinka to go and sit on another window seat they just wanted to mess that guy up i'm so proud of that young man let me tell you the question here is not about being elder or not being elder the question do you know why airlines assign seats to people do you know that if there was an accident the insurance on that person will be void don't you know that's why they have manifest that's why they write people's names against their seat numbers. If anything happens to you when you are not sitting on the seat that they assigned to you, your insurance with the airline is void. A lot of you don't even know this. I'm telling you. And so, this young man had a right, that is my opinion, he had a right so to sit on the chair that he paid for he was not being disrespectful in any manner will it show inka i have a lot of respect for him but let us learn to dwell on the topic on the incident that happened when it comes to that particular incident that happened on that flight that time that moment when will show inka was sitting on that seat he was being disrespectful to himself and he was acting in an indisciplined manner. He cannot do this in Canada. And for those of you who say, Chidi, don't come and tell me, don't, 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 don't come and tell me that uh, uh, respect is because of where you live, you people that bring this foreign culture. I'm telling you, no. Here, they, dis they respect people more than the Nigerian. You know, the thing that gets me so angry is that in Nigeria, we don't respect ourselves. The government does not even respect, your government does not respect your elders. Here, when you are a senior, you do not pay certain taxes. When you are in a seat, seniors have special places for them in public vehicles. Here, Disabled people and seniors are respected. You don't have respect for seniors in your custom in Nigeria and you just come and you're talking what you don't understand. This is where they show respect if you want to see respect. This is where they respect people's age. This is where seniors respect themselves. When they get to the age of retirement, they retire. In Nigeria, when they get to the age of retirement, they are still competing for jobs with young people who just came out of school. But why are you people complaining? No problem. Now I understand. Now I understand why, why you are suffering the next level you're suffering right now. Because you will not vote against your elders. Because they are your elders. So, go ahead and enjoy your elders that you are respecting somebody builds a house on the road and they have to divide the road for that person and you will not talk why because he is your elder of course everything else no it 
it is your duty. How, how do I how do I explain this? We are mixing so much up. If Nigeria does not respect, if Nigeria does not understand that it is time that people respect themselves and if they don't respect themselves and infringe on your right it is your duty to remind the person because if you don't remind them then they will not even know that they're doing something wrong so the new norm in nigeria should be that when you enter a plane and you just come and there are and, <laughs> let me tell you what will happen in nigeria the young people don't have money in Nigeria. A lot of the young people cannot enter plane because they don't have jobs. Have you noticed that when you enter a flight in Nigeria, 70% of the people in the plane are elderly people. I'm not saying that everybody stole Nigeria's money, but a lot of the people that stole Nigeria's money are the ones who have money to be in business class. When you look there, you see them with their pot bellies. So what will happen now is that when a young man comes into that just managed to make it by really working his ass off, when he enters the plane, all the old men who have squandered our money, you still have to respect them in the plane. I say don't respect none of them. That's where, my, that's, that, that's where I stand. That's my opinion. So all those of you who think we are wasting our time, no, I don't want us to waste our time. Let us keep on doing what we are doing let's keep on doing Wole Shoinka told us that we are not doing enough you know sometimes that's the way things work sometimes I'm a Christian you know I'm born again you have to be careful what you ask God for when you ask God for peace he doesn't send people with angelic wings and white robe. No, he sends you trouble so that he can train you about how to find peace. Because it is when you are able to handle that trouble situation and get peace out of it, then you will become a peacemaker. When you want to get to another level in life, God sends exams your way. God sends tests and trials and tri tribulations. When you don't want to ascend, when you don't want to be promoted, you will not have challenges. You will not have, have tests because you need to pass the test so that you'll be promoted. Do you understand that? Does that make sense? So when Bolesho Inka was asking the youth to rise up, when he was asking the youth to stand up for their right, that's why God just set him up in that situation with a youth. And that youth just demonstrated to Shoyinka what he has been asking us to do a long time ago. And he failed. I think this is where I should just end this, this broadcast. Because just when he had an opportunity do you know how the story would have been if you heard that Wole Shoenka was sitting on a young man's seat and when the young man asked him to get up he got up without asking questions and somebody writes and says I have never seen a man like this it is beautiful when people don't just talk the talk but they walk the walk that he demonstrated what he believed in. Do you know how the story would have been? Anyways, that is my opinion. I want to thank you for listening to this broadcast. Um, when I call you next time, please uh, uh, honor us and uh, be part of our discussion on worship media. My name is Dr. Chidi and uh, with Erica, we want to say bye-bye. Thank you.